Hi, I'm Ken Howard, and welcome to the Gay Therapy LA podcast. Today, I want to focus on gay men's sexuality. Focus on the five senses for better functioning. In my experience as a gay men specialist, therapist, and life career relationship executive coach these 30 years now in 2022, and more recently as an ASECT, American Association of Sex Educators, Counselors, and Therapists, nationally certified sex therapist, I've had quite a few guys want to work with me frankly and honestly about their quality of life by way of the quality of their sex life. And that can be about the type, frequency, quality, setting, guys involved, feelings about it, functioning about it, and all kinds of variables that overall come under the heading of making my sex life better as a gay man. So some previous episodes have explored how a therapist or a sex educator coach, I do both, might address erectile dysfunction. And one of those previous episodes was called Cognitive Causes and Cures of Erectile Dysfunction, and there have been others. But one strategy that I've been working with guys on, my clients in my practice more specifically, cognitively and behaviorally, is about what's known in sex therapy as sensate focus, focus on sensations. So there are lots of discussions on this that come from the sex therapy world, but the one I've been helping with guys try lately as their homework between sessions is to use the classic five senses approach, sight, hearing, smell, taste, and touch. Focusing on the five senses can help guys get out of their head, which is a common complaint that I hear. They want to be more functional in sex, either with erections or orgasms or both, but they get anxiety that they call, oh, getting up all in my head about it. Now, just a a side note for a second there, you know, not everyone has all the five senses. Um, So, you know, the deaf community or someone who is blind or visually impaired or has issues with taste or touch Uh, trauma survivors who are sensitive to touch, or people on, let's say, the autism spectrum disorder. You know, that's another kind of discussion, and I don't want to just leave them out of this discussion. It's a big assumption to talk about having all five senses, especially with equal facility, but um, you get the idea, so I don't mean to diss um, those who have, you know, sensate challenges of any kind or disabilities, But um, just for the purposes of this discussion, we're going to make this kind of big assumption about the five senses. So what's antidotal to getting all up in your head, as multiple guys have said to me, is to ground yourself to sensations that, for once, aren't really about thinking, deciding, analyzing, contemplating, evaluating, assessing, weighing, pondering, ruminating, whatever. It's about bringing your experience of being alive, including in sex, to the basics of how humans function. So our senses help us to make sense of the world. Focusing on the senses tells us what we're dealing with. It helps us to be in the moment, in vivo, in life, not in the past, not in the future, but concentrating on what the present circumstances are to make the most of enjoying the experience, in this case, the sexual experience. It's really a form of mindfulness that we hear so much about, being mindful of what we're experiencing moment to moment. The idea, and many guys report benefit from this, is that by focusing on each of the five senses in turn can be one of several cognitive behavioral in vivo techniques for enhancing sex and help us to overcome the hump, so to speak, from being less satisfied to being more functional and more satisfied with each and every sexual encounter that we have in whatever context. So it's a technique to improve sexual functioning for gay men that differs from other demographics and differs from other sexual enhancement. 
that might come from medical interventions from a medical doctor who's your endocrinologist or your urologist or even other cognitive behavioral techniques that would be part of a discussion some other time, you know, such as roles you might play as a sexual partner. Well, all of those can be helpful and part of your sexual toolkit and repertoire, let's discuss the five senses technique in more detail and let's make it more focused specifically on gay cisgender men, since that's the, the, the very niche focus of my practice and my clientele, with all due respect to other demographics who aren't in that category. So in no particular order, let's take each of the five senses. Number one, sight. You know, we process a lot of information from what we see. We get oriented to time, space, objects, the relationship between objects, risk assessment, and an overall positive or negative picture by what we take in at brain speed precision so fast that we can't consciously realize the data we are processing. In the case of a perceived danger, for example, we are mounting a defense, such as putting our hands up to deflect an object flying at us faster than we can consciously realize. So when we take our time in what we're seeing in a way that can experience fun and pleasure during sex, it can be a rewarding experience. So start with asking yourself in a sexual situation what you see, especially watching your partner. If you're having sex with this guy, you've probably already established that you're attracted to him visually. If you find yourself in your head with anxiety, just refocus on every detail in your partner that you see in front of you. Does he have a sexy haircut? If you're in a room with dim light, is the light reflecting off the shine of his hair? Does he have sweat on his pecs that's sexy? What about his chest hair pattern? Do his teeth gleam when he smiles at you? Does he have a necklace that looks good on him? Does he have a pretty color of his eyes? Does he have smooth skin or a sexy scruff or facial hair? Does he have a shape of physique that turns you on? Maybe there are other visual cues. Is he wearing a leather harness? Is there a glow of the light of a candle in the room? Is it daylight and you see him very clearly for the color of the morning light in the room? Is there a screen with porn playing in the background that's turning you on with him? Ask yourself what you see in terms of level of light, colors, shapes, textures, the relationships of objects to one another. Does his hair dangle in his eyes? And how seeing each of these makes you feel. See if there's a connection between what you see and what you feel and what arouses you or intensifies your arousal. Number two is hearing. What you hear in sex can enhance the experience. If there's porn playing in the background, can you hear what the models are saying? What about its background music? You know, that porn music people love to make fun of. What music is playing in the background, if, if, there, if any? Are there noises around, like being in a secluded place outdoors, but hearing planes fly overhead? Are there birds chirping in the trees outside or, or around you? Is he being verbal with you and saying sexy things that turn you on? Are you saying those things to him and you're hearing yourself say them? Is there a specific sexual sound you hear, like someone's ball slapping against an ass? Is someone slapping someone's ass cheek? You know, is it hot to hear the bed squeaking or the chains of a sling ringing? If you close your eyes and you focus on the sounds, what do you hear? And does that take your arousal to the next level? Number three is smell. Scent can be a favorite. While most guys either love or hate the musky man scent of a guy with no deodorant, that can be a turn on from the pheromones your partner is releasing, or you, and can enhance arousal, like natural poppers. Or do you smell actual poppers? Again, those are not for everyone, and, and poppers need to be used with caution because they're not exactly health food, but they are a classic scent enhancer in sex. Does your partner wear a cologne that you associate with him? 
Is there incense burning in the room? Is there another scent in the room, like it's a, it's a secluded locker room or a room in a sex club or a bathhouse? Does the scent smell domestic, like you're having a quickie before dinner's ready and you can smell what's cooking in the kitchen? Some guys get turned on by the lingering scent on a smoker, either of tobacco, like a cigarette or cigar play, or marijuana. You know, scent is especially powerful for arousal because of its neurobiological association with memory in the brain and its many recollect like, recollections and memories that scent can trigger. And while some scents can trigger in a bad way, like a traumatic memory, or even the scent of, let's say, a you know sexual hygiene accident, <laughs> scent can be a popular arousal enhancer of many different kinds and circumstances, and it has a powerful potential to influence, influence us strongly. Number four is taste. You know, this might be a lesser recognized sensual enhancer in sex, but it can be important. Certainly kissing and tasting a guy's tongue and mouth would be the most common, but guys use taste in other ways. The taste of pre-cum or semen or sweat would be natural fluids, but some guys use taste in another way, like the use of whipped cream or chocolate syrup to lick off. Or romantic foods like chocolate-dipped strawberries, which are kind of shaped like the head of a penis, or grapes, you know, it can be classic foreplay. More controversial, perhaps, the taste of a recreational substance, like ketamine or cocaine snorted in the nose, and tasted in the back of the throat can be an association with sex. Marijuana or tobacco smoke play, you know, one guy blowing it in another's mouth, can involve a taste sensation. And here, please note, you know, I don't really ever recommend, you know, the other smoke, crystal meth, because in many years of clinical practice, specifically with gay men, I've never seen any recreational use of crystal meth be manageable. You know, the others are not exactly health food, but I vehemently recommend that even relative to the other recreational substances in our communities and our culture worldwide, which I don't necessarily endorse, that's up to you, I do take a stand to recommend that you steer clear of crystal meth as a substance option because I believe its relative harm far outweighs other recreational drugs based on my over 30 years of clinical experience and observation working specifically with gay men. The idea here is to think of what kind of taste sensations would enhance your experience for you, even if other guys might not get into that. And that's true with all of these sensory stimuli. What one guy likes or even goes crazy over, another guy might not tolerate at all. So part of sexual communication might be exploring what you and your partner both like. Number five is touch. Many guys report to me that a lack of sex can be emotionally difficult because of simply the lack of being touched. That's a real stressor from a primal human standpoint. During the pandemic, I heard complaints of that, or even guys who are single. Not only do they not have as much opportunity for sex if they're just not hooking up or dating much, but also some guys report to me that they can go weeks without being touched by another human being, which is kind of a sad state of affairs. There's that classic research that says that babies need to be held in the early days of life or they will die. You know, we love getting and giving hugs. It's just such a, a primal support of being human. So the role of touch in sex is pretty obvious as it is in sex, but we can get an enhancement out of it if we really focus on touch sensations of many different kinds. So there's the warmth of someone's body against ours, especially naked, the weight of feeling a guy on top of us or us on top of them, the feel of the skin of so many body parts under our hands, their back, their neck, their ass, their cock, their balls, their hair, their face, their arms and hands and feet. Other kinds of touch can be arousing, 
like the tightness of leather straps or cuffs or silk ties or handcuffs or rope in bondage play, the texture of what those, what that gear feels like, the feeling of cotton or satin or leather-like play sheets on the bed, the firmness of a bed or its pillows, or the scratchiness of a carpet if we're rolling around on the floor, or the cold porcelain like in a tub or a shower. You know, the stimuli of touch can be so many things about our partner or what's around us. You know, penile stimulation is about touch. Sensate focus on your cock can explore in turn the sensations of warmth of a mouth or an ass, the level of wetness or tightness or friction of, of either orifice, their mouth or their anus or their hand. Even a conceptual touch idea like feeling his mouth or anus be hungry can arouse us and enhance our rectal hardness or functioning. And the intensification of touch stimulation can make the difference between achieving orgasm or not, you know, in conditions like delayed ejaculation. So actually, an intensification of the arousal we get from a focus on all five of these sensations can help be a cognitive sensorial intervention for erectile dysfunction or delayed ejaculation. And it's just a matter of putting our mind into it to focus on each sense in turn. And when we do this, we probably find that we have a favorite stimulus and that it's making it fun for us. Other kinds of cognitive experiences can arouse us and enhance sex, such as getting into being dominant or being submissive, or being aroused by the idea that we are finally having sex with our favorite gym crush, or our favorite social media pen pal, or someone we've admired for a long time. You know, these are not sensations as much as they are just thoughts or ideas that turn us on, but they can enhance arousal as well. Even verbalizations, you know, dirty talk can be a kind of sensory enhancement that relates to hearing, but it's also about role playing and playing with the dominant and submissive dynamics or, or even role play of all kinds is another cognitive enhancement idea that enhances arousal. And we can do more on sexual role play um, and circumstances of sexual experiences, you know, some other time. So if you've been disappointed in sex lately or plagued lately by the getting all up in your head anxiety, try to remember that among consenting adults, all's fair. You know, not only do you have the right to sexual enjoyment, despite the constant barrage of anti-gay sentiment from Republican or religious conservative voices in media that are just so overwhelmingly ubiquitous, don't say gay laws, or, or just all kinds of oppressive, rageful rants from these right-wing people who would just have us stripped of all rights, and really all rights to exist. You have an obligation to your physical and mental health to provide sexual enjoyment for yourself. Just like you would give yourself food and beverages and sleep and shelter from the elements. And if you're following sound sexual principles as a guide, so you can see my previous episode on the six principles of sexual health from my great colleagues, Michael Vigorito and Doug Braun Harvey, they, they talk about the six principles of sexual health in general in their book, uh, Treating uh, Out of Control. Uh, oh, I'm messing up that title. Sorry, Treating Out of Control Sexual Behavior. Um, and uh, they talk about the six principles of sexual health in general, but I took in that episode and applied it more specifically to gay men, and that can be a guide about how you feel about the sex you're having, and does it follow certain healthy ethical principles. And if so, then you're on solid ground in terms of your basic rights and responsibilities. Principle among these, I think, is the idea of consent that we hear a lot about um, in media these days about the ethics of sexuality being very much informed by a sound definition of mutual consent. 
So if you would like more specific help on troubleshooting challenges in your own sex life, please consider therapy if you're a resident of California, where I'm licensed to practice therapy, or coaching in other states and countries. And there's some really important legal and ethical differences in those professional services that we can discuss and differentiate. But there are many areas of overlap, including just having support for improving your subjective quality of life. And while many mainstream therapists or coaches or even gay male ones who aren't specialists either can't due to lack of training or won't because they find it icky deal with gay men's sexual issues, I'm happy to. I'm honored to. So call or text 310-339-5778. That's 310-339-5778. Or email me, ken at gaytherapyla.com for more information. You can also see other episodes, um, or hear other episodes, let's say. Uh, you can check out my blog articles at gaytherapyla.com slash blog. And your comments and your questions are always welcome, even suggestions for new episodes. I would love to hear from the guys who I know download this all over our world, our small little blue marble, and uh, would love to hear from you would also uh, really appreciate reviews or ratings or sharing this with your friends who you think might benefit from this episode or any of the the previous uh, over 100 episodes so as always thanks for listening and I'll see you next time